What's up guys, welcome back to my channel and to today's video where I'm going to be sharing with you how to make the easiest apple cider vinegar. Remember, before we get into it, if you like the video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Please don't forget to hit subscribe. And also, if you make your own apple cider vinegar, let me know in the comment section down below how you got on. So there are many reasons why I like to make my own apple cider vinegar. The first one being, I really enjoy the fact that it is zero waste and it allows me to not buy a shop bought product anymore. Secondly, I find it to be a lot less potent than the shop bought vinegars, which I can find really, really hard to stomach. And thirdly, it's a fantastic way to use up any leftover apples that you have in your house around harvest time. So for this particular batch, I picked a variety of apples that were for the most part lying on the ground after harvest. I probably picked these late September, early October, just as the harvest was finishing and one shot bad apple from my fruit bowl, which I didn't think I was going to get around to eating, but as you can see, it's only slightly bruised, but as it is a sweeter variety, it's just going to add a little bit of depth and a little bit of sweetness and flavor to the final apple cider vinegar. But you can use absolutely any variety of apple. And the first thing that we want to do is chop your apples up into small chunks because the more of the apple that's exposed, the more the bacteria is going to have a surface area to work on. I like to use every part of the apple. You can even use cores or scraps for this, but I do like to take out the seeds. You can absolutely chop these even smaller if you want to, but for me, this is a perfect size. And the amount of apples that you will need will depend on the size of the container you have. So you want to fill it up about three quarters the way full with your apples and whatever type of container you use is absolutely up to you. Plastic, glass, I really like this glass container from Ikea. It's just the perfect size for this particular batch. Next step then, we're going to add about a quarter cup of sugar into the apples. Any type of sugar is absolutely fine. I have just used plain granulated sugar. You can use caster sugar, brown sugar, anything that you have on hand. That sugar is basically just going to feed the bacteria and get things kick-started. And once they've actually fed on all of that sugar, they will move to the sugar in the apples. And to your apple and sugar mix, we're going to add some water. Now, what I like to do with this is to leave the water jug on the counter overnight because we don't want to add any chlorine or any other chemical that could actually prevent or inhibit or even kill your bacterial growth. Chlorine and other additions to tap water can actually inhibit and prevent that. So leaving it out overnight allows some of those additions to just evaporate into the atmosphere and you end up with a more pure form of water. But if you can get your hands on distilled water, all the better. I don't have access to that, so this is a great way to do that. And you're going to fill your glass container just to the top of the apples. Give it a good stir around to dissolve all that sugar. And once that bacteria has started to break down that sugar, what's going to happen is they will actually start to eat the sugars in the apples, breaking them down and producing your vinegar. And we just want to cover that now to make sure that no debris or dust gets inside because we are trying to get the benefit of all the natural yeasts that are present in the air without being influenced by any dust particles or microbes that might be floating around in the air. I really like to use a muslin cloth, but a tea towel will work perfectly fine. A loose lid, even anything that will keep all of those nasties out that we do not want to enter our apple cider vinegar. All that's left to do in this part one is to leave your mixture alone on the countertop or in a cupboard, somewhere where it's nice and safe at room temperature to allow all of that bacteria to start entering the apple cider vinegar mix and doing its job. The only thing that I would advise that you do to make sure that we don't get any mold growing is to give it a stir once or twice a day and make sure those apples are nicely mixed. So after about three or four days of sitting on the countertop and stirring, you'll notice that your apples start to turn brown, which is completely normal. They are starting to break down and you will see some tiny bubbles appearing. That is brilliant, that's exactly what we want. That is carbon dioxide, and it is a byproduct of the reaction that is happening inside in your mix. You can see here, as I stir, that more and more bubbles are starting to form, and as you stir every single day, you should notice more and more bubbles. One thing that you should note is that you won't end up with the same volume of apple cider vinegar as what you started with. There is a certain level of evaporation that happens, and I would say you end up with about two thirds of the original mixture that you started with. 
So I actually switched over to a larger jar here because I did do a second batch this year. And I think you can see from the two comparisons, the processes that have happened. So in the bottle, you can see almost a separation. You see the really light liquid on the top and you can see the darker, more thick looking consistency on the bottom. That is the apple cider vinegar mother. Now you can strain this out if you don't want it in your vinegar, but apple cider vinegar with the mother is a much purer vinegar. It's less refined, it's less processed, and the mother is what contains all those powerful health benefits that you've probably heard about. It's a very healthy culture of bacteria, so I never remove it, I always leave it in. And over time, it will develop into what's called a SCOBY, to the point that you can actually remove the mother and use it to ferment other vinegars. So again here on this second batch, you can see that I haven't stirred it for maybe two or three days. You can see the apples on the top are becoming quite brown. So I want to mix those in, make sure that the bacteria is having a chance to work on all parts of the apples. So we're breaking everything down, nothing's going moldy, and look at all those bubbles. That is absolutely fantastic. That's exactly what we want to see. This has been fermenting for about 30 days, which is what I would recommend. You'll probably be able to tell as the smell develops when your vinegar is ready, if you've ever had vinegar before. If this is your first attempt at making vinegar, you can buy pH strips, but personally, I trust my own judgment. I think you're probably well capable of assessing when something is vinegary enough to suit your taste. So don't be afraid to give it a taste. It's not going to harm you. For me, this was absolutely perfect. Again, not nearly as potent as the shop bought stuff, which makes it really, really easy to stomach. And all I'm going to do is take a funnel, a glass bowl and a sieve. And I'm going to pour the apples and strain out all of that beautiful vinegary liquid. You might need to do this in batches depending on the size and the amount of apples that you've used. But look at all that lovely liquid straining through. Give it a helping hand, give it a stir, give it a squeeze. Make sure you're getting all of that lovely liquid out of the apples. If you don't have anything similar to a sieve at home, you can do the exact same process by using a cloth and just strain the liquid through, holding back all of those apple scraps. You can then throw those into the compost bin and wash your tea towel or your cloth. That will work perfectly fine as well. Just make sure it's clean. So you can see after minimal effort, we are left with this beautiful jug full of vinegary goodness. Again, I did not strain and strain and strain this mixture to the point that I lost any of that mother. I have kept as much of it as I possibly could. And believe me folks, you won't believe it when I say that you are done. You have just made your own batch of beautiful apple cider vinegar, ready for cleaning with, ready for use on salads, ready to act as a powerful antibacterial agent if you have a sore throat. Really, this is one of the most beneficial products that you can have in your home. And even better, it is zero waste from start to finish. Apple cider vinegar will keep for an incredibly long time, as I mentioned, because of that acidic pH but I would aim to use it up within the first three months if you possibly could at all. Typically, it doesn't last very long in my house because I do really, really love to add it to salads. But that's it, everybody. I really hope you enjoy the video. I hope you enjoy the process when you go to do it yourself. And if you do try it out, let me know in the comment section down below. Tag me in all of your social media and please don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already done so and give this video a big thumbs up. And I'm really, really looking forward to seeing you back on my channel in my next video. Bye!